So a popular question is, how many words does English have or any language? And there's no easy answer to the qu that question because there's so many layers of words. We start with the core words in the middle and then you go out and out into increasingly rare, obscure uh, words until eventually you reach ridiculous dimensions where you could really, really question whether these things are actually words in the language. Um, so the, the, it's really hard to draw a line. So uh, in order to take a look at this uh, and just to, to explore the world of words that are around uh, in English, I'd like to take you on a journey uh, from the center to the outer limits of uh, English words. Um, so here we're going to look at the uh, we're going to look at the frequency lists on uh, Wiktionary. So here we have uh, there's many different lists, and uh, you know, of course, we'll, so we'll select English. You can see that the same process you can do for many other languages as well. So this same uh, thing uh, you can it's really interesting to see uh, which words uh, stand out in other languages. Here we'll start with English, and you can see that there isn't just one list, of course, because how do you even count what words are the most common or frequent? You just have to take a giant, uh, a giant collection of words, which is called a corpus, just, uh, named after the word for body. It's just a body of sentences and words and uh, examples of the language being used, and you just have to take this giant collection of it, and then you simply count uh, how many uh, of each word there are. Um, so you can see many different forms. A lot, a lot of them really focus on the most common words, uh, of course, because that, that can be useful for language learners. Uh, when I'm learning a language, I certainly like to take a look at you know maybe the top 100 words uh, and learn those because you know if you know the top 100 words of a language like you're gonna that's you know it may even be something like half the words you ever hear are gonna be those top 100 words uh, so that really helps to uh, to boost your your language learning and so that's you know typically where these are used and you can kind of measure the the strength of your vocabulary uh, by how far out you go uh, you know, if you know the core thousand words, that's a very strong foundation. If you know 10,000 words, that's a pretty thorough vocabulary. And if you know 100,000 words, well, then you're like really like some kind of uh, rarefied vocabulary master. Uh, so uh, lots of different lists, and you can see a lot of them are focused on specific things. Like you can get a Shakespeare list, uh, you can get a uh, list from fiction, fic uh, uh, list from TV, uh, which th these are often good for getting sort of casual conversation, TV and movie scripts, um, uh, because a lot of, you know, a lot of the sources for these lists, you know, it can be a lot of uh, more written stuff. So if you really want to focus on the, the spoken word, like I, I like the TV and movie script uh, collection. But for today, I, w I want to be able to look at lists that really go out to extremes. Uh, and so... Uh, for that reason, I've selected the uh, Wikipedia word frequency list from 2023. Uh, so this list, uh, it's just a very simple text file, which you can see I have open on the left side of the screen. Um, it's so big, it, it's like, we can't show files that are this big. Like they, they don't, They're not even trying to show the preview uh, because it's so giant. It's about uh, 33 megs uh, of uh, plain text. So I've downloaded the file, opened it in a editor, and so now, yeah, now let's take a look at this list. So, you know, each, each line here, we simply have the line numbers and then we have the word, and this is the number of times that it appeared in Wikipedia. Um, so here, uh, these giant numbers I like to highlight in groups of three to sort of catch the millions here. So. Here, though, we can see 186 million times in Wikipedia. So the, uh, maybe no surprise that the word the is by far the most common word in English. And you're going to be saying it like, you know, not very long will go by in English conversation 
uh, before you hear the word the. Uh, so that's that's something that uh, you know it it really dominates uh, the word frequency list. And there's really a steep decline, you know, from these very this very top end. You have uh, these prepositions of and in uh, that are very common, and of course the conjunction and uh, to join things together. We're already at 76 million. Ah, which is sort of the indefinite version of the. Another preposition to. Finally, we get to our first verb is was. Here they separate was and is. Here's another thing that can that can differ between different frequency lists is how much they combine similar words together and count them as you know parts of the same word. Because uh, many lists would combine words like is and was and combine them all together under this for B. You know, that, that's how typically a dictionary would handle it. You wouldn't typically have a different entry for is and was. It's all part of B. Uh, so that really throws things off. Although, even if you did combine all the forms of the word be, it's still not going to beat the, not going to beat the. Um, so here you have yeah, see lots of prepositions that are really dominating at the top. Right? So as, with, by, okay, so, and here we have the first pronoun. We have he, okay? And so here we get, this is really like the core. This is, this is the top. This is the center. This is like the home base of English, uh, where you have these words that are going to be used, you know, almost like almost every sentence sometimes it feels like, like it's hard for a minute of English conversation to go by without a lot of these words coming out. Uh, so we're in the top 100. And so this is what I recommend for language learners to all, you know, learn, learn the top 100. Um, you can see some effects though, um, that this is from Wikipedia, so you know it's it's a bit more technical, academic. Like, is really is the word national really the sixty second most common word uh, spoken? Uh, probably not. Uh, you know, world and state. So you see, this is a lot of stuff that you know this is appearing in a lot of Wikipedia pages. Um, so there are effects from that uh, that will throw things off. So it's, this is not really a perfect list of the. Uh, most frequent words, but it does give the idea of the level. This is one I want. What I want to show you, because we're really still in the very center here, um, and things are going to get a lot weirder. So uh, these words, yes, you can argue about exactly how common they are, but they're all pretty common words. And we have second, okay, against. Oh, finally, I shows up. You see, this word is actually way more common. Like. Uh, for spoken language, like this would be up there, you know, really, I, I think maybe even in the top 10, um, but definitely uh, up way high there. Uh, but of course, in a in uh, encyclopedia, it would not be quite as much. Um, but yeah, all common words, in fact, everybody who's listening now probably knows all these words, uh, and they're very common. Uh, I can see dates, yeah, yeah a lot of these effects uh, from the uh, from the fact that it's an encyclopedia, here they have lots of entries, uh, you know, related to dates. Okay, things like you know, general, yeah, population, of course, like, you know, like every article about a country or a town, you know, that mentions population. Um, so, okay, these are all pretty normal words. We're getting out here, you know, community, nothing, nothing too weird. Um, I mean, well, okay, maybe individual letters. Of course, these are all counted by computer, um, so uh, th there's a lot of little kind of edge cases and uh, you know uncertainties about exactly how to count everything. You know what it counts as a word, like do two things joined by a hyphen count as a word, and things like that. But you can consider M to be a word, referring to the letter M. Sure, hey, and then E, yeah, E, like you have letter each each letter. The name of each letter is kind of a word. Right, so although of course endless arguments are possible about what you know officially counts as a word, but uh, I see no reason not to consider the name of each letter to count as a as as a word in a sense. Uh, you can see a lot of these. These also include uh, proper names that would not be acceptable in Scrabble, for example. You know, Scrabble would say no European. That's a proper name. Uh, it has to be capitalized. Um, as far as I know, there might be some. Word, but yeah, certainly this common version. 
sometimes there's proper names you know that normally are capitalized but then there's like a uh, some kind of a rare version where you could you could write it without the capital like like China typically capital C China the name of the country but you also have China with a small C uh, for the type of porcelain uh, for plates or whatever uh, so that there is that uh, possibility but here we're talking about like the very very common word European this has to be referring to the proper name European so this would not be acceptable in Scrabble okay fine um, but it's being counted here as well okay so and things like France here so this is including proper names you know Australian America Indian right so all of that is being included we also have some uh, questionable uh, abbreviations here or you know what these uh, are acronyms or abbreviations that you know it is questionable whether these counts uh, count as words but we're still going on here we know we're in the top we're in the core thousand and it's all you know pretty normal stuff like it's kind of it's kind of impressive really like how many words that we normally know like a lot of these are like it, it's a lot of words Although you can see that like the numbers have already gone way down from from you know over a hundred million for the you know we're now we're now well below a million you know for these uh, so okay so we've made it to the one thousand mark with the word administrative okay fine um, so now let's let's see how things uh, go when we uh, move things along here uh, to Let's see what things look like. Okay, 1500 teaching. Okay, uh, so we're still, you know, in very familiar normal territory. Um, 2000, powerful. Well, completely common normal word, publishing greatest. So even down here, yeah, you can see there's this, there's this encyclopedia slant, you know, parliamentary and these kinds of more academic, formal, uh, encyclopedia kind of words. Um, but still pretty common stuff, like nothing too special. Okay, so we'll keep scrolling down here. Right, we're barely scratching the surface now. Um, although we're well, at this point, like I, I believe we're, we're well over 99% of all words, you know, are gonna be above this. And yet, we're, in terms of the number of words, we're still near the beginning. Because there is that very steep curve that like the, the very top words like the, of, in, and all like the, those core words, the top 100 and so on are really like dominating, you know, half of all the words. And, and then the next 900 words, you know, they have most of the remainder. And then there's a very, very long tail where you have so many words that you like will almost never see or hear. Um, so these are all pretty, pretty common stuff. Okay. And we continue, we're, move, feel, we're moving out. Things are getting a little bit, uh, a little bit less common. Okay, indicated, yeah. And all these proper names are, are you know, are also affecting the list. Uh, you'll see a lot of lists that won't include names like you know, here with Arkansas. Okay. All right. How about we go up to 3,500? Ongoing, totally normal word. So absolutely, pretty normal. Okay. You know, we also get some names here. Okay, Morris. Absolutely normal words. Legs, okay, fine. This is all, all very familiar territory. Looking out at 4,000, interstate. All right, execution, enrolled, accessible. Yeah, a little bit technical, but all very common stuff. Spots. Yeah, I mean, you can maybe get a few hints of things starting to get yeah, you know, maybe a bit out of the ordinary, but not really very much. Guidance. Okay, let's jump ahead. Another thousand uh, words. So guidance is number 5,000. And now we get to uh, 6,000, which is trucks. <laughs> okay, so it's still completely uh, conventional, ordinary, everyday territory, even out here. Um, so, okay, let's jump ahead to 7,000. Silence. Mm, well, still, still normal. Like, there's, you know, there's, there's so many words, each one with its own story, uh, its own angle. Uh, okay, so 8,000. Claire. 
Okay, so this must be referring to the name Claire. Yeah, and that's definitely throwing off this list compared to most lists because we're including all the proper names. We looked at country names, and now we have uh, people's names. So that's padding this list a lot, uh, where you would, you know, lists that would not include that uh, would would be, uh, you know, they would have, we'd, we'd be much further out by now because we're including all the common names. And you can argue about whether these kind of proper names, you know, count as real words, but uh, in some sense they do. Uh, it acts as a special kind of word. Uh, so Claire is number 8,000. 9,000 Burmese, okay? And when we go ahead to English words, like our proper or non-proper uh, words, we have cardiac and forested. Okay, so, you know, getting a little bit more specific. Um, and now the big, the big 10,000 is transparency. Ooh, okay, so still, uh, you know, diagnostic, insured, transparency, obsolete, font, you know, it's getting a little bit, little bit more technical, you could say, um, a little bit out there. All right, let's jump ahead to 12,000 now. And we have choreographer, payload, Julio, and lack. Okay, so yeah, these are getting, you know, you starting to get a bit of a feeling that, you know, these are a little bit more niche. It's a little bit more technical, a little bit less every day. You know, you'd only have specific conversations that would ever mention these. Whereas, you know, like the top few hundred, like you'd have like almost any conversation. It's almost hard to have a conversation without saying those words uh, in the top uh, 100 or so. But out here, it's only certain uh, conversations that would ever have them. Willard, okay, name, Sami, uh, the people, zoology. Rec so you have some technical things, but even the word like recognizable may be affected here by this is the American spelling. So there's the British spelling with an S that that may be more a more common one. Integrating though, coil, revolver, slab. So these are all, you know, you know, they're getting a little bit more specific and niche, but you know, nothing, uh, nothing too much. Okay, so up to sixteen thousand now, and we have outlaws. Okay, so and they've well, they're counting that as one roach plurality, Wallace leasing. So okay, maybe a little bit of. Uh, you get you get a bit of that that sense of being away from the center a little bit. It's getting more into like a little bit of niche territory. And for eighteen thousand, which I overshot here, we have indices. Okay, that's yeah, dynastic German speaking. Pause. Okay, yeah. So this is something that can throw off a lot of frequency lists is when you have these words that are combined with hyphens, like feature and length. You know, each of those words is a pretty common word, but when you combine them together, uh, you know, it's a fairly low frequency to actually combine these together. Although still, you know, nothing too, nothing too rare or exotic. Okay, so now we're going to go up to the next big milestone of 20,000. And we have Davao. Okay, so this is a proper name. I, and Nunavut, um, contested, my geography there, Nunavut in Northern Canada. Davao, sounds familiar, but I couldn't tell you where it is. Renovate, well, that's actually a pretty common word. Knockout, you know, um, easternmost, officers, metrics, onions. <laughs> onions, that's not too rare, uh, you know, too rare a thing uh, when it comes to uh, everyday speech. Um, so let's jump ahead now to 25,000. And you can see uh, we're really getting out there. Um, but as far as as far as the uh, this uh, file is concerned, we're still you know right near the top of this uh, scroll bar here. Okay, so here's the first hint to me where now things are getting uh, a bit out there. Okay, because now we have histone, which is a word I've never heard of. And um, so this is the first time I've seen a word that really stands out as being, you know, what is this? 
um, tell it, okay, so here that's where we're gonna, gonna call this up here in uh, Wiktionary and uh, see what is histone? What does it mean? Bi so it's a biochemistry word. Water soluble proteins rich in lysine and arginine complex with DNA in eukaryotic, eukaryotic chromatin. Okay, so here we're getting into very, very specific biochemistry. Oop, I'm blocking the, I was blocking the definition there. Very, very specific biochemistry. Uh, and so that's what you see with a lot of these outer words that they only appear in very specialized situations. So example like this, you know, histone is probably a word you could easily go your entire life and never say or hear the word histone unless you're somehow involved in biochemistry. Right, so within that field, it could be much uh, more common. Okay, so we have Nikolai and we have uproar. Okay, that's not too uncommon a word. Lamborghini, bothered. Yeah, so this one happened to hit in some, you know, pretty common things. Subscribe, right? So we're definitely seeing artifacts uh, and, um, you know, effects from this specific Wikipedia list that I think like an everyday speech list, you know, come on, subscribe is not that uncommon. Um, so it certainly would be a lot more common than histone. All right, so let's go, let's go out here to 35,000. And we have axon. Okay, so here we have another uh, word that I believe that is from biochemistry. Um, and yes, a nerve fiber, nerve cell. Yeah, so that is another technical word from science, uh, from in this case biology. Cytology, study of cells. Okay, so that's 35,000. So we can push out to 40,000 now. And we have importers, okay, pediatrician. Yeah, that's not too uncommon. Um, impasse, you know, not too weird. Let's jump ahead to 50,000. And starting to get, I mean, 50,000 words is really a very big vocabulary. Like most, I think most people will not more, know more than 50,000 words. Uh, and so, of course, it may not be these specific 50,000 unless you are an encyclopedia, but, uh, you know, 50,000 words really can carry probably more than everything you need to say in your entire life. Instinctive, okay, so still not too uncommon a word. Yimazong, so, you know, actuated, instinctive. It's not too far off. I'm gonna stop using, I'm gonna go, whoa, I'm trying to move to the scroll bar here to, but that's moving things too quickly. Wow, so, because there's just too many words here. Again, I gotta, I'm gonna try to scroll down to 60,000. And, Let's jump up. Okay, after this, I gotta scroll. I gotta use the scroll bar I, I, here to to be going out to these further limits. Okay, so sixty thousand is unhinged. Ooh, no, not too, nothing too weird yet. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Okay, let's try the scroll bar, and I'll lightly move down. Whoa, eighty. Yes, yeah, so let's just jump ahead because we got to do. Let's. <laughs> Let's see, we see, okay, low light, centrifuges, <laughs> Al-Qaeda's, newsworthy, All right? So, not, yeah, deceiver, young, lots of names here, hookah, you know, some words I've never heard of, uh, survive, I don't even know, maybe this is a proper name rather than a, uh, you know, a common name. Going out to, okay, let's actually see, I, I wanna see what is word, uh, what is word number one Hundred thousand. As we reach the big milestone of one hundred thousand, a number that nobody should ever have to know more than a hundred thousand words, probably ever use them. 
Entführung. Okay, I have now this is this is English, by the way, so the, it looks like a German word. Presumably, could be more common in German. In fact, it's only being listed here in Wiktionary. It's only being listed in German, uh, but it was being used in uh, English Wikipedia for some reason. Abduction or kidnapping uh, in German. Okay, and here we have another one. Dignitas. There's a Latin word being used uh, in English. You know, a sense of dignity, uh, essentially. So, you know, the word dignity would certainly be much higher as an uh, English word, but if you want to use the Latin as, you know, you can often uh, use it, maybe if you're talking about some kind of a, you know, some kind of a Latin concept, um, referring to Latin, then uh, you could use the Latin term. Uh, or if you just want to be fancy, you know, use, use Latin. Okay, so now we go down. Let's pick one in the middle here, you know, hierarchic. You have Michelangelo. Um, I wonder if that's mis... I thought Michelangelo didn't have that A in it, so I don't know if that's like a different spelling of Michelangelo. Xenu. Isn't that the ancient alien from, uh, from Scientology? Uh, the Paris-Dakar rallies. So I get into very uh, specific things. Uh, going down and so we're going all the way out to one let's see number 200,000 what is going to be number 200,000 is sostenuto okay so here's a musical term which means sustain. Okay, so this is, of course, you can see the similarity. This is the, from the Italian word uh, that means sustained. But because of the tradition of using Italian words in music, instead of saying sustained, you would say sostenuto in order to say that something should be sustained. Because I guess you, you become a little bit Italian when you're speaking in technical music terms. All right, so. Let's see, what do we got here? Four. Well, let's look somewhere around the 250,000 mark, quarter million. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit weird now. I mean, Mick? I mean, because a lot of these are going to be names, like sheet-like. Okay, yeah, you see with these, these hyphenated words are kind of these little islands of uh, familiarity out in these weird uh, realms here. Uh, because you have sheet and like are both very common, ordinary words. It's just the combination of them together that ends up uh, this far out. But otherwise, like these, these words are starting to uh, scramble my brain a little bit. I mean, you can see that a lot of these are going to be names. Um, and a lot of them are uh, words brought in from other languages that are just showing up in English Wikipedia articles. And so I really feel like by this point, by a quarter million, uh, we've already left the ordinary range of English. Like these are not, these are not ordinary English words, except for the ones that, of course, four lane highway. Of course, you can see these hyphenated words, unconscionability. That at least is built out of recognizable uh, pieces of English words. Uh, you know, unconscionable being a fairly not too uncommon word, but then unconscionability that form of it, uh, you know, only 123 times appearing in all of English Wikipedia. Wrongdoing, here with the hyphen, I think this without the hyphen would be much more common. Um, citrulline, I think, is that some kind of like a, a rock, right? So a pole arm, well, there's a, you know, a name for an old type of weapon. Uh, so a few of these are uh, familiar. Gender responsibility, again, these uh, hyphenated words, non-liturgical, yeah, but otherwise, other than the hyphenated words, like, it's getting, it's getting quite unusual. Socred, that, what is that? that? I mean, that looks kind of like it's an English word, uh, or it could be. Social credit political philosophy, okay, that's, and that's based on, uh, based on uh, an old uh, political movement from uh, from around 100 years ago. Okay, so that was big in Canada. So Silk Red, being this being made as the abbreviation. Okay, so very specific to to that. 
Okay, so let's go down. We're already into in very weird territory, but let's let's go all the way out here to the the uh, the halfway the half million mark, and we'll see what is word number five hundred thousand. Which, by the way, is far outside anything that would be in any most frequency lists. And the whole reason I'm using this list is most frequency lists will not come anywhere near this level, 500,000. Okay, <laughs> Oat, uh, we have, um, we have mu Mutai, Mutai. Okay, so what is Mutai? And I appreciate uh, Wiktionary for handling multiple languages because a lot of these words are really gonna only be words in other languages. So uh, Mutai, okay, it is an English word. It is a brand of Chinese liquor produced in Mao Tai. Uh, okay, so it's based on this old spelling, Mo Tai, uh, of this Chinese word, Mao Tai, uh, but spelled like, yeah, it's, I, I guess it is Mao Tai. Uh, it's meant to be pronounced Mao Tai, but using a different uh, spelling uh, than, than normal, than, than Chinese would normally be written as. Um, so, yeah, very specific. You can see only uh, discussion of that particular, you know, brand name would, uh, th that would come up. And really, like, that is, I mean, could we even find a, a regular word out here? Well, look at this. Even <laughs> number 575,469, we have an Arabic word. It's not even, you see, it, it even uh, kind of like breaks the display here because Arabic writing from right to left uh, actually is now lines up with the right. Uh, and this is, oh, it's Pashto, uh, language of Afghanistan, translation of Ibrahim or Abraham. As with, so that, that discussion, um, you know, possibly coming to, the, possibly from the name of people, yeah, the name of people from that region, uh, there'd be articles about them, and then it would include their name in that language. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these are actually ended up being far beyond uh, anything that could ever be considered English. Uh, and so, you know, the pro I think as we get down here, the proper names are really starting to become more prominent, uh, that they are, you know, a lot of just names that you might only see a few times. Like we're down here 25 times, 26 times appearing in Wikipedia. Uh, when we go to the three quarter million mark, what do we have? We have contiones. Okay, that kind of looks like it could be a word, maybe from Latin. And yes, it comes from contio, which is a meeting. Okay, so this would be like multiple meetings. It comes from actually conventio. So it's the same origin as the word conventions. And said it's contiones if you want to, you know, say it in a uh, Latin way. And we have glibert. I mean, that, that looks like a misspelling of the word Gilbert. I imagine that might be what it is, because of course misspellings can also end up uh, as words as well. They'll be counted uh, counted as well. All right, now I want to see the big one million. Count down. We're getting. You see some other uh, foreign writing systems showing up uh, among this list, and. We're down to 17 appearances in all of English Wikipedia for all these words. And we have the one million smarde. <laughs> Gloatingly, we have a couple of the, here we have you know, sobriquet. So we have some recognizable English words along with these very obscure things. Okay, I got to see what smarde is all about. Okay, well, we have now reached, we have reached uh, the level where even Wiktionary is not appearing uh, in, is, is not showing up these words. So we're getting into real obscure stuff. The closest thing we have here is a Moldavian, a regional, <laughs> from, a, from a regional Romanian dialect, the word dirty from a Moldavian regional dialect of Romanian. So really very obscure. Um, I'm gonna try to search for it without the, 
the, the macron there above the A, the line above the A, just the word smarter, but no. Nope. Smarta, even though it looks like kind of a base, it looks like something that could be a word uh, somehow, you know, pretty basic letters and only a few of them. But even, you know, there's so many letters, it only takes a few letters to make so many combinations that even a simple combination like this has um, absolutely no results. Okay, so yeah, now we've already, you can see like we're kind of in outer space right now with this kind of stuff. Um, and <laughs> things are uh, already just uh, beyond belief. And well, I'm even like losing track of the, you know, keeping track of these numbers because they have so many digits now. So I, I want to go to one and a quarter million now and see, you know, what's out there. So for one and a quarter million, we have Divta. Well, okay, I was not ready for that. Now that doesn't even have vowels in it. You wouldn't expect that to be a word. And here, no idea of what it is. Um, so let's look at maybe one and a quarter million in one. Calendruccio, that looks like a druccio, that looks like an Italian word. Um, but it's still not showing up. It probably is somebody's name. Um, galactinate, okay, this, is, uh, this one looks like an English word, galactinate. Here we have another organic chemistry word, lots of those. A salt or ester of galactonic acid. Okay, so we have a somehow recognizable word. Um, you know, this would be galactum, it's come from the word milk, which is the same origin of the, as the word galaxy or galactic. Uh, and it has these pieces to make it this special uh, chemical word. Okay, we'll move on to, oh, blocking, oh, block there, block the definition there. Okay, so now I'll move on to one and a half million. Already in this weird outer space region uh, where few will ever look. And we get to 1.5 million. The winning word is wismg. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you can really see we, we've come a long way from the uh, of and in. So we now have wismg. So I think this can uh, clearly not be a word. Uh, and actually, I have no idea what this could possibly be. Possibly uh, some kind of an acronym for something. And of course, for the, these kinds of things, like you could just like, you know, you could do a Google search for it. What is Mizuga? Well, it's a radio station. <laughs> there you go. So, oh well, yeah, in fact, here's a Wikipedia article about Wizumaga. <laughs> it is uh, a radio uh, call sign. Okay, so, probably on this page, how many times does it say Wizumaga? One, two, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven. Oh, 12. There's 12 occurrences of Wismaga on this page. Well, here it only shows nine. So probably the entire existence of this word, Wismaga, is due to this one page. Okay, so, you know, we're getting a little silly here. It's obviously not a word. It's an acronym. Um, but there we go. That's the kind of things that we're left with. Okay, we're getting, getting near the end here. Let's, let's jump ahead all the way to 2 million. To see, what is the big 2 million? We're down to only five occurrences in all of Wikipedia. So probably all of these words, they're all only going to be appearing on a single page. So, wow, we're so far out. It's going to take me a long time to even page down through all these, all these ridiculous words. Okay, so I'm going to go out to the big two million. This is too many words. Okay. Nobody will ever know these words. Okay, so what obscurity? I mean, you know, you can see that all of these words are literally only five times. So there's actually, you know, the, the two million mark, it's really not that unique because, you know, it's, it, all of these are kind of tied. You know, these words are all tied for something, uh, you know, way out there uh, because they're all, like, they're all at five. Um, Wow, okay, well, you know, isn't that nice that at least we have a word that is recognizable as an English word. It's not wismaga. 
Okay, so this is, uh, we have encephal encephalomyopathies, which in fact, even though it is such an obscure word, it contains pieces that are recognizable. So encephalo is, refers to the head, myo refers to muscle, pathy referring to disease, and then the plural. So these are diseases of the muscles of the head. Uh, and you know, that's, that's so that you, you can see like the power of learning these word pieces and these word roots is that you, know, you can really figure out some really obscure words just by knowing their pieces. So of course, yeah, plural of encephalomyopathy, which is encephalomyopathy, any disease that affects both the brain and the sp spinal cord. Ah, okay. Myelopathy. Oh, okay. See, see, I was looking at, see, this says myo, uh, which would be muscle, but it's actually the proper, the, that it seems to be a version. In, yeah, the myopathy is, it's a version of myelopathy. So that's actually, you know, and this myelo uh, refers to the marrow. Okay, so that'd be the spine. Okay, so they're referring to the marrow of the bones of the spine. Okay, so head marrow disease. Disease that affects the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, wow. And surrounded by really obscure words, what? Macropodines. I got to see what that is. Does that mean big? Because macro means big and pod means foot. So these big foot. Big foots. There's a fun word. Look at that. A macropodine, an extremely unnecessarily fancy way of saying Bigfoot. And here's the plural of it. Big foon, big, big foots like kangaroos and wallabies. Wallabies, okay. All right, I think it's time to wrap up as we've gone into really uh, silly territory. And I believe that we're, I believe it does not make it to 3 million. So we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom of the list, and which is 2.7 million. And we have LIFO, um, which I have no idea what that is. We're down to three here. They didn't even bother counting things that only appear twice or once. Well, here we have, so it's down to three. Okay, Wait a minute, let's look at kindly, because it kind of looks like it could be an English word. What is kindly? No, oh, kind. Well, of course, kime, kime, kimely, it sounds like this is making, uh, you know, making an adverb out of the adjective kime, if that is such a thing or making an adjective out of the, no, the noun kime, if that is such a thing. Um, so to kime, from Middle English, to come. Oh, so it's a Middle English word to come. So kimely could be some kind of obscure way of saying comely, as in beautiful. Uh, also, possibly a version of the word chime. Okay, I'm just gonna run a uh, Google search on that, kimely. No, see, it, it links to Kimley, no, Kimberly, nope. It tries to help you with a more common word. I'm gonna put it in quotes, so we're only gonna get Kimley. What does Kimley mean? Well, I guess it's a name. Okay, so we have, it, it's considered uh, a girl's name. So probably, Kimberly, yeah, it's probably uh, a girl's name, a uh, woman's name that is, you know, related to the word Kimberly, and it's Kimberly. So that's uh, what we're left with. And we even have, you know, Chinese words appearing, just not even, not even uh, bothering to change them into uh, English letters. They're just being counted here. Uh, here we have uh, a Chinese word, which out of curiosity, of course, I have to look it up. What is this? What is this word? Well, no, it's not even appearing. It's not even appearing uh, in, the, in this dictionary here. So. Okay, I'm not going to try to, to hunt that down. Okay, but I, well, you see how easy it is to get lost in these things. Now I got to see, well, what is Wito Toanas? Okay, I don't know, probably somebody's name. So these are getting into, you know, absolute obscurity, the far outer limits of anything that could not even really be called English, but uh, something that, uh, you know, appears in English Wikipedia. So. That is a little trip from the mid, the center of the English word universe, the, uh, all the way out into uh, words like wismaga and kindly <laughs> words. You can get so you can see like the idea of counting words. Obviously, there's many of these that are absolutely not words by any stretch of the imagination, but you can see how there's this very uh, there's there's this big 
there's a big peak of all our common words that we say all the time and then it goes way out into thousands and thousands of words that almost everybody in the world will never say and ever hear their entire life. And even if we were to remove all these obviously names and obviously foreign words, it's still not an easy task or not really uh, a, a defined thing to say where does the English word list end. So I hope you've enjoyed this journey to the outer limits of English vocabulary. English vocabulary, we can say, um, but uh, it really uh, gets into some really weird territory out there. And it can at least tell you that, you know, you'll never, you'll never run out of words to learn. Uh, there's always going to be more. Uh, I don't think many people at all know more than 100,000 of these words, and there's a lot more to come. So there's no end to these words.